Hello, everyone. How are you? Good morning. You know what I really like? I really like entering a room full of people I don't know. Have you ever heard a person say that? No. Have you ever heard a developer say that? That's for sure no. So guys, we're here to talk about networking, as uh, Lucas says. Um, but it's not networking between computers. So I don't know if you brought your any uh, cables or so, but it's really not how to connect computers together. It's how to connect people together. And basically, how you can make the most out of the three days while by connecting with people. Now, what you're going to get out of this session is actually very, very interesting. You're going to get the code of networking, how to actually network in the event. You're going to have the, the exact pathway to do it. But you're also going to get, for the first time ever in the world, at the end of the session, I'm going to literally, physically, give you the superpowers of networking. So if you'll stay until the end, you're physically going to get the superpowers of networking, and then you're going to be the best networkers here. Now, why do you need to be the best networkers here? or at least the best for you, the best for your version. Because you all want to achieve something, right? You may want to get some promotion, and you may want to maybe earn more, and you may want to get this amazing project out in the air, and you may want to solve something, or you may want to uh, get a project done. So many things that we want, and everything we want actually goes through people, through a relationship with other people. Now, it's going to be a very interactive session. I'm going to make you or ask you do some things in order to start the networking now. But I want you to raise your hands, please, just to understand why you came here. So raise your hand if you came here because your boss gave you three days and he's paying for it. I actually don't believe you. <laughs> so that's one reason why people come to events. Second reason is you came here because you want to learn something. Oh, now you're talking. OK. Second thing, you may want to meet with new people. Okay, good, we have a nice audience here, I'm happy. And maybe you want to reconnect with old friends that you have seen before and maybe we'll see you again. That's also a good way to connect with people, fantastic. So guys, it's really important that, ev that, that you'll know that everybody that sits here, if you look right and look to your left, every person here can be so significant, either for how much you'll enjoy this event or maybe for your uh, future success. You only need, you need, the only thing you need to do is just unlock this relationship. Because eventually, guys, it's all about people and opportunities come through people. Now, a bit about me and what gives me the, the honor and possibility to stand behind, be in front of you here and share about networking. So I am Liron Glickman. Basically, what you need to know is that I love people, yoga, and whiskey. Who else loves whiskey in the audience? I know you. <laughs> Fantastic. That's what you need to know. But honestly, when I was a little kid, I, I had a lot of dreams. I'm sure like each and every one here, we all have our wishes and dreams. And my dreams were maybe a bit different. I wanted, when I was five, I wanted to work at the circus. And then I realized I don't know anyone in the circus, so how can I get to work at the circus? And then later on, I wanted to work on a cruise ship. But then I realized I don't know anyone in the cruise ship, so how can I do this? And then I wanted to work for NASA. And maybe I should have gone to become a developer, because developers get to NASA maybe easily than people like me. But at a very young age, I realized that, that People, knowing people can help me open the doors. Obviously, I need to have some skills as well, but it will help me open the doors to fulfill myself and fulfill my, my dreams in life. And that's how I started actually researching around the world. You can go and see my CV, but basically I have a 20 years of global experience. And I realized after about 10 years of working in Australia and in the US that my skills, my, my abilities are actually people skills. And I researched and created a methodology which I teach around the world on how to do networking, how to build a personal brand, and also business development and marketing for startups. I even got, i um, very honored to be a, an a advisor to an external United Nations committee. But how does it relate to you? Because today when I work with software developers in corporations, also startup founders, basically what we're trying to understand is how to get them and you maybe 15 or 20% more um, better in networking in order to achieve their goals. So for example, I had this uh, program developer that wanted to get a promotion. And then uh, he understand that he, he needs to know more people because the management don't even know he exists. So what we did, we created a networking challenge. Every day, he had to go and do something which is a little bit more than he used to do. Either say hello to someone, maybe 
offer someone a drink and up to asking for a free coffee from the cafeteria. So he had to push himself a bit more, and at the end, he was able to increase his ability to create relationships, to feel comfortable, and even got a promotion. So that's a bit about what I do. Now, today we're going to crack the networking code, which means, and I made this code for you, we're going to, I'll show you how you're already a natural networker. I guess you can read that better, right? I'm going to show you how to plan your networking at this event to make the most of the event. I'm going to show you how to break the ice with people, how to connect with almost anyone, not everyone, but almost, and how to build your relationship for the long run, and also how one sentence, the one sentence that can make almost anyone want to help you. Ready? Let's dive in. So what can you get out of this conference, guys? You can get a lot of things. Some of the things would be knowledge and resources or maybe solutions to some urging problem that you're now dealing with. Access to leaders. We have so many leaders here. If, if they're sitting here among us or the speakers or anyone else, you can get access to them if you'll only talk to them. You can strengthen existing connections. You can uh, create new industry friends. You can maybe find people to hire. Maybe job opportunities for you if you look for them. And of course, have fun. Having fun is at least half of uh, the, the way. Now, if that's so good for us, if networking is so good for us, why so many people love to hate networking? What do you say? Why people love to hate networking? We don't know where to start. We don't know where to start. Thank you. Take people out of the comfort zone. Who wants to be out of the comfort zone? It's not fun. Right? We all love to hate it. But then again, it's good for us. Yes? Being embarrassed. We've all been embarrassed, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's, we all share it. So <clears throat> there are a few reasons. First of all, it's because no one has ever taught us how to do it, right? No one taught us how to do it. And, and the absurd about that is that Anywhere we go, we need to know how to communicate with people in order to help them and make sure they will help us. I mean, it's not from a bad point of view. It's actually that's how humanity thrived, right? Through collaboration, through people helping one another. But no one has ever taught us how to do it. And actually, we don't have the privilege not to learn how to do it. And the next reason why people love to hate networking, which is actually something that for me made me really feel really, really good. Research actually shows that 90% of the population reports some type, some levels of shyness and anxiety in social interaction. We mean you and me and everyone here, we are on the scale of feeling uncomfortable in different situations. So I think that makes, makes sense that we're all feeling uncomfortable. Now, let's open up a bit, okay? I want to, I want to see what you feel, how you feel uncomfortable around uh, such interactions. So let's see what, but people who feel uncomfortable in social interactions, what goes through their minds? Raise your hand if you ever felt what you talk to someone. What if they don't want to talk to me? Yeah, thanks for sharing this, right? We all felt that, so it's natural. Have you ever thought when you talk to someone, they may think I'm manipulative and just want to take something out of them, which maybe I'm not, I'm just saying hello. Exactly. What about, why did I just say that, right? It happened all the time. Thanks for sharing. And last one, I just embarrassed myself. F. So it's okay. We're human. It's happened to us. And that's really important because we said about, we talked about the comfort zone. It's really hard to get out of the, out of the comfort zone, but just want to make sure that we know that everyone experienced that. Because eventually it's really simple. Networking is really about forming an authentic bond with people. It's about maybe giving or finding interest in others and having fun. But if it was that simple as it says on the, on the board, maybe we, we wouldn't have to learn how to do it, right? <clears throat> now, I want to show you why we're all biologically wired for social interactions. Our bio biology actually helps us to feel better. So let's uh, do this experiment. Are you ready? I want you to look behind you or next to you, to someone you don't know. Smile and tell that person, if you and I are here, it means that we're the best in the world. All right, let's do it. John, if you and I are here, it means you're the best in the world. Nice, I love seeing that. And I love seeing you guys all continue talking. So what just happened here? Raise your hand 
<laughs> Raise your hand if it feels a bit embarrassing to do it, to say it. Was it a bit funny to say this sentence? Yeah? Did you, God forbid, enjoy it a bit? Good. So let me tell you what happened in our bodies right now. Actually, you probably uh, heard of the hormone oxy oxytocin. And the oxytocin goes out, our body brings it out whenever we have different, even short social interactions. And the beautiful thing about it, it goes for both of us. So both of the people that are speaking actually have more levels of oxytocin, which is the friendship hormone. Which means we, we feel um, a bit more like friendship, like people, maybe even trust other people. And it's very easy to, to make it happen. A single minute of positive chat, maybe a smile, maybe sharing something, a meal for lunch, or I don't know, just offering someone to give them a drink, and paying full attention. So all it has to take is just smile, feel maybe a bit embarrassed, but also accomplished, because you accomplished something, and then your body actually helps you feel more engaged in any social interaction. So that's one thing, why your body, why we're already wired to uh, social interactions. After we figure that out, let's see how to network in this event. So the main reasons why people hate networking, especially go to such conferences, is because they feel that it's a, it's a like bad use of their time because they never get connections, they never get relevant people. And the reason most people don't meet with the relevant people is because they just don't set a goal. So I want you to think, who are the people that you want to meet during this event? And I'll say even further, networking, relationship building, is a way to achieve goals, personal, professionals, in a mutually beneficial way, in a way that both sides enjoy it. So I want you to think, what are your goals? In order to know who are the people you want to meet in this event, what would be your goals? Maybe, maybe you want uh, to become a better leader. Maybe you want to solve an urgent coding problem. Maybe you want to get promoted. Maybe you want to earn much better. Maybe you want to retire. Maybe you want to hire people or find a new job. Whatever you want. I want, based on that, that think, who would be the people you wish to meet with during this event? So maybe name or possibly role, maybe um, a program developer at Wix company or another company or a company that involves with uh, biology or testing or you will check that. So in order for me to make this um, session as much as practical for you, I want you to think of those people and please go to Mentimeter. You can scan the code or, do, or write menti.com and write the code. It's anonymous, but you can write your name. It would be nice. And I want you to add there, again, who would you like to meet? Role and expertise or role or a company? And this will be available for us all so we could see it and maybe we could also help one another here. Let me share the Mentimeter. So you also have the code on the top. And let's see. Yes, sure. You, you can also see it on the top, but I'll come back as well. Great. Works for you? Good. You can write role and company, or role or sector. You can even, if you want, you can even write your names if you feel comfortable. All right, let's see what we have here. So, people in the audience here, you guys, I want to meet with Director of Engineering at Kilo Health. Does anyone know the Director of Engineering at Kilo Health? Maybe we can help one another. Does anyone know engineering managers in IT? Look at the people that raised their hands. Maybe if you guys are the one who wrote it, you can approach them later. Python developers, do we have Python developers in the audience? Okay, over there. Um, tech founders, do we have any tech founders? I like to meet tech founders always, so let's talk about this after the session. Um, we also have QA leads, software development uh, of any company, someone who had overcame big struggle and can share it. Ante, you overcame a big struggle and you can share it. Exactly, and you're going to speak on Friday in the morning as well. Exactly, so I'm promoting you as well. You see this is like sharing is caring, right? So we, you guys want to meet developers, advocate for uh, our, our staff, software engineering, someone who uses Rust in production. 
These are amazing, everything you see here. And this is actually your needs during this conference. <clears throat> so when you approach people, I'll always also give you a bit later some very good formula to use it. But it's important to know who you wish to meet with. So that's the first thing. That's the first goal setting. And then after we set a goal, we know what we want to achieve generally and what we want to, or who we want to meet in this conference that can help us achieve this goal. The next thing would be how to stand in lax way at the conference. And when I mean, when I say lax way, I mean where the luck is. The luck is where the people are, right? Like where can we be where we meet so many people that some, we can get lucky or they can get lucky by meet us professionally. So I want you to think about it this way. Let's say we were um, a coach, a football coach. And as a football coach, you tell the team, right? You share with the team what they need to do, where they need to go. You think together with them. where all people are. And let me tell you some of the best locations to be, to be in the way of the luck, of luck. It's lines, lines for food and drinks, line for the restroom, registration line, like, um, line at the door, of course, and next to sponsor booth, uh, the smoking area. So let's say you got there, you're standing there, and then you focus on one person and you say, I want to talk to him. How do we start? How do we break the ice? So, does anybody has a, what's your tip? Anybody has a tip to break the ice? Okay, well, this is kind of a cold area, right? It's a cold part of the world. You should, you should know how to break the ice. So let me share a few of my tips. I'm gonna give you, let's, let's play this game. Whenever I go to conferences, usually at the beginning, I, I take a spot at the back or maybe in the upper floor if I can. And first of all, I just observe. And when I observe, and when we observe, it looks something like this. It's actually very scary. It's very intimidating. Like, all those people, and how do I know where to start, and I want to go home. <clears throat> right? It's really hard. But then let's try to make sense out of those people. So who would we approach? Where would be the easiest places, the easiest people to approach? So, for example, here, who would you approach in this part of the, of the session? The girl, the girl who is standing alone with coffee, why would that be? She's also wondering who should I talk to, and that's a great point. What's your name? Lesa? Lesa. I hope I said it right. <laughs> okay. I'll try. Um, I, by the way, remembering names or, or saying names is also a good way. We're going to talk about it later. Also a good way to connect. But basically, everybody in the conference wants to make connections. So people who are standing by themselves, as you said, they're also looking for some connections. So it would be very easy to approach them, as you said. And also, these two nice guys, you see how they're actually standing like in an open... Also, their body is, is open, but also the way they're positioned, there are more space for people to just come and join the conversation. So you should look for people who are either alone or either standing in an open kind of formation. Here, in this part, we talked about booth earlier. So if I stand either, uh, again, there is a person in the back next to the uh, orange sign that is alone, but also if I'm standing next to the booth, I can just start and talk to the people in the booth or standing in line, and I just kind of join the conversation. It makes so much sense. What about this? Is it breakable? Would you be able to talk to these two women? Right? It's, they're, too close, they're too close with one another, they're very close physically, and also their body language is close, so I wouldn't uh, put my efforts in there. And maybe last, one last thing. You see this group of people? The, um, uh, at the beginning, they were talking about the Pac-Man uh, model, which basically, whenever you are in a group of people, don't close the circle. Make sure the circle is a bit open, and that's a great example for that. Because if I was this guy with a coffee, I could just turn left and make an eye contact with one of the people and smile and just join the conversation. So these are a few tips of how to break the ice and how to start conversation or engaging with people. And then, here are some of my best openers to breaking the ice. Some of the sentences would be, Hi, I am Liran, nice to meet you. Simple as that, right? 
Another sentence could be, you can ask for a direction and then introduce yourself. For example, uh, where is hall uh, number five or where is the alpha room? Oh, thank you. By the way, I'm Liron. Nice to meet you. So just a situational question. The same way you can give a compliment, it has to be professional and positive and kind of not to embarrass the other people. Usually between women, it's very, it's very easy. Uh, but usually a good compliment would be something positive, professional, and, and specific. For example, oh, I like your watch. Where is it from? Or it's so nice that you came to this event if I know you. Um, and then you can continue the conversation or um, present yourself. And you can help someone who needs it. Sometimes we just see people who are lost. I was at a conference, and, I, and I, was seemed, I seemed very lost. And then this woman approached me, and she said, oh, my God, you seem so lost. Can I help you? And I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm looking for a friend. We, she's like, where, where did you set to meet? I was like, we, we, we uh, set to meet next to the uh, beverage bar um, at the, um, was it, it was the stock exchange of the UK, sorry, it was the Chicago Stock Exchange event. And she said, darling, this is the UK Stock Exchange event. You're in the ho wrong hotel. But since she looked, she saw me, and she saw I was a woman in distress, we actually became really good friends. Just because she approached me, she found out that I'm, I was wrong, and then we became really good friends. So sometimes, helping people can make friends. And maybe the, the last best opener and the icebreaker I can give you during this conference is actually to approach people and blame me. Just tell them, Liron made me do it. I have to say hello. So these are the icebreakers. So we talked about setting a goal. We talked about where to stand, location. We talked about icebreakers. And then I want you to think how to become memorable. And now I'm going to give you the small talk formula. Because you know, you know how you can connect with almost anyone? What's the one thing that will help you connect with almost anyone? Mm -hmm. I feel really yeah. Where, you know, I usually have that kind of positive energy, and people are telling me, you know, how I'm awesome, you know, how they talk. Yeah. Me, so you s like my personality and everything. So you say, be yourself, be your positive self, be you are, and I think that's the best tip. But but it's not always easy for everyone. Sometimes it's really uncomfortable for us to be ourselves or uh, to bring our personality. Sometimes it takes time. But you know, taken from what you said. There is one thing you should remember about that. It's just showing people that you like them first. Most of us are waiting for people to approach us, waiting for people to say hi to us. But if you will approach them, if you will smile at them and make them feel comfortable next to you, you are already one step into building a relationship or starting a conversation with someone. And taken from that, I want to share with you the small talk formula. You're into formula and codes and algorithms, so that's going to be easier for you. So the formula has three parts. The conversation has three parts. The first part is about the first impression. It takes about 30 seconds to one minute to build a first impression. And it's made out of three things. First of all, the nonverbal, the smile. If you smile at people, if you're approachable, then they say, okay, this person is, is good. Now, our brain, just so you know, usually asks a few questions when you meet new people. First of all, is it safe to be next to these people? And second of all, do they like me? So if you smile, it means to other people, you're signaling that it's safe to be next to you and you may be liking them. Second thing is about positive vibes. Is, is your smile, is, is how you speak, is your voice tone? And it's about the personal introduction. Now, I want to give you a tip for personal introduction. You can use this formula. It's, hi, I am Liron. I am a business development uh, coach from the human factor, and I help uh, software developers and startups to make sure they reach their goals. You can do the same. Hi, I am John Smith. I am a software development developer from Wix, and I help anyone who wants to build a website to create a website, an amazing website in seconds. Does that sound good to you? Does it sound memorable and fun and interesting? Not much, but that's the basic. But I want us to spice it up, okay? Let's make sure that we're going to be even more memorable. So if we're taking from this, you can start with another spicy twist um, sentence. For example, I have a friend that whenever you ask what he does, he say, I deal with drugs and sell toys. What do you think his profession is? 
if he's dealing with drugs and selling toys. It's intriguing, right? It's like, okay, so what do you do? What do you mean you sell drugs and sell toys and you say like nothing happened, right? That's intriguing. Actually, this friend of mine, yeah? Coffee machines, that's nice, actually. Machines, but not coffee. What he does, he actually, he works in the uh, medical equipment. So he sells medical device and actually medicines. So that's like the toys and the drugs. So that's the idea. But that's, a, that's an in intriguing um, opener. And then people say, what do you do? And then he explains, and then he shares the former formula. Second thing, I have a friend who called himself, I'm the pirate of the programming seas. What seas? What pirate? Tell me more about it. I want to take what you're taking. So that's also a nice thing. We have a few people here in the conference that call themselves the code monkey. And we have Dave Aronson, who's also going to talk at the conference, who call himself the T-Rex. So what do you do? I'm a T-Rex of programming. Or if you, obviously, you need to find something that you feel comfortable with. But find a sentence that defines you, that intrigues people to ask you more. And that's how you'll be more memorable and can start the conversation. So I'm going back to our small talk formula. We said the first thing is about first impression. It's about smiling. It's about personal introduction and positive vibes. The second part is actually the body of the conversation, where you should aim to create connection with people. Actually, it's pretty easy. We do it all the time. You probably know that, but you may have not thought of it in such a uh, form. First of all, it's about finding common grounds. Common grounds make us feel so comfortable next to other people because it feels like we know them or like we share something with them, so it feels safe. And then it's about finding interest in others and it's about stating their names. So thankfully, we have our name tag and we can look at the name of the people and we can state it. Maybe we can even talk a bit about their names. But common ground, I want to give you my formula of common ground because finding a common ground is really one of the best ways to make people feel comfortable next to you. So in order for you to remember what you're going to talk with people about, remember the four P's of common ground. Passions, places, people, and present. Passions, if I'm going to ask you about uh, your latest uh, project or what you're working on right now, or maybe your latest vacation or any hobby, you know how the energy in the conversation shifts when you talk about something you love? So passion is always a good thing. Places, is it your first time in Vilnius? Are you from here? Where are you from? Where have you been? Oh, I've also been there, you know, talking about places that we love and share. Maybe people that we know or people that we've met here in the conference, the speakers or some mutual friends that we find on LinkedIn and so on and present, what happens right now. So if you ever uh, don't know what to say during a conversation, use the four Ps to finding a common ground and conversation topics. And the next thing I talk to you about connections is about questions. And some of the best questions you can ask people to get a bit closer, to connect, to learn about them, and learn if, if you want to continue this conversation even. It's really the WH questions. Try to find interest in them. For example, what brought you here? Uh, what is the most exciting project you're currently working on? Or how did you start doing what you do? People love sharing their journey and how they started doing what they do if you have a bit more time to speak with them. Or what is the biggest tip you can give me? Or how can I help you? That's the best question. How can I help you? So these are some of the questions that can get you closer and connected to other people. So to finalize the small talk formula. So first impression, connection. And the last part is about continuity. You don't have to continue the conversation with anyone you meet, but if you do feel like you want to continue and, and get in touch, then what you should do is see how you can give value and set a hook for the next step. Give value means maybe you, can, you talked about something and you can share with them um, a code, uh, a link to an article, or so on, and then they will, ex they will anticipate to hear from you. So if you'll send them a message a week later, they will not say, okay, why did they contact me? It's like, oh, I was waiting to hear from them. So you, when you talk to them, if you want to continue the conversation, just make sure to create a reason to contact with them. And the reason could be, what can you give, guys? So what, what could be the reasons to continue the conversation when you meet people? Yes. Employment opportunities, amazing, very important in your company or what else can you give? You can give so much, like some of the brightest people are in the room. So I'll give you a few more tips. What you can give, you can give, you can debug, you can maybe help them with debugging some of their uh, issues. 
send them an article uh, or a research that you've just read and is relevant for your conversation. You can share maybe a professional information of all kind. You can connect someone to them. Tell them, oh, you're looking to meet with X, like we said before, maybe I can connect them to you. You can share your CV if it's about a job opportunity, or you can share a link to a website or a company website. You can share so much. And what is not recommended to talk about, just to make sure during the conversation, a few things, guys. Don't say you'll be in touch if you want. You can connect. It's okay to connect on LinkedIn and never be in touch again. It happens, it's okay. But I wouldn't tell people I'll, I'll get in touch if I, if I not get in touch. In most cases, you can understand that at the beginning. I won't start talking about politics. I won't talk about salary and any other topic that can break you apart. Your mindset should be, how can I talk with them about topics that will bring us together, that will connect us, that will make great vibe talking to this person rather than breaking them apart. And if there is one more very strong tip I can give you about how to connect with people and make sure um, you really build a connection with them if you choose to, is create your own conference squad. And it goes like this, it's actually two sentences. I love this Zig Ziglar, by the way, quote that he says that if you help enough people get what they want, you will get what you want. So if you can understand what people that you wish to continue relationship with or connecting with are interested in, then they probably help you. So this two sentence code to create a squad in the conference, it's about doing this. Any person you meet that you find fun and interesting and nice and, and you want to continue the conversation with, first of all, ask them, who are you looking to meet? I might see or know them and I can introduce you to. So who are you looking to meet? I asked it earlier and you just, you just added that on screen. After that, the person tells you who they're, who they're looking to meet. Usually, they will ask you the same. They will ask, okay, good, but who are you looking to meet with in the conference? And then you can tell them, I'm looking to meet with uh, program developers from uh, internet or, or ad companies. Okay. And then if they're not saying this, you can say, by the way, I'm looking to connect with people in the ad sector. So if you come across anyone, let me know. Now, it doesn't mean that you will connect it to them to them and that they will remember you, but it still means that you set this in for a possible connection and you will try to remember them and they will try to remember you. And if you do this with a lot of people, then it's a numbers game. Then some of those people will connect your relevant people. So that's a very strong tip if you do it consistently. So we talked about finding your goal. We talked about where to be in terms of location. We talked about how to break the ice with people. We talked about small talk and how to make a connection and memorable, be memorable with almost everyone. And the last but not least is about follow-up. So after the event, you fly back or you drive back to your homes. And then what happened next? The thing, the problem that we all do, our main problem is that we forget. We forget to get in touch with people that during the conference, it was so amazing to see them. But after that, we forget. And some of those people won't be relevant, but the relevant people for you, I don't want you to forget them. So this is what I suggest. Remember that know that we usually forget who we met, so make sure to document that. Write it down for yourself here in the conference. Create a WhatsApp group, create a note, uh, put it in your email, wherever is good for you. Make sure to write down the relevant people that you meet with. Then, we usually forget what we talked about. Make sure to take notes. So if I'll, if I'll get back to you tomorrow and I'll say, hi, this is Liron from the conference. Thank you so much for, for sharing this uh, point when I was asking the question. And then you're like, oh, she remembers me. She acknowledges what I said. So usually it's about, hey, how was the trip in the Scottish Highlands where we talked about just in the elevator a few minutes ago? So if I'll come next week and remind and, and share this with you, like, oh, she remembers our like small conversation in the elevator. That's nice of her. So it's really about the small anecdotes that if you'll write them down and if you'll share it in the emails, people will appreciate you. And that's build a relationship. That builds a better connection. And the last thing about how to not forget is we forget um, to send in a timely uh, manner. So try to set a time, time for next week in your calendar, time for getting back to people. So that's how you make sure you follow up right. And maybe another great tip when it comes to following up, it's really about selfie. These people are people, are, some of them are my friends, some of them people I met at events, and it's always nice to do a selfie with people and then send it to them. Hi, John, it was so nice meeting you, by the way. This is our selfie, uh, just as a nice memory from the conference. So it may feel a bit uncomfortable, but that's definitely create a memory of the same moment in the conference. Now, because I said I want you to guys to practice on what we're doing, so I'd like you to turn around and look at the person next to you and just have a nice selfie so you can send one another later. You'll do a selfie and I'll take a picture of you making a selfie.
Oh my God, you're even enjoying it. <laughs> Let's take a selfie together. Yeah. Let's connect. What's your name? Bogdan. Bogdan took it a step further and came all the way to the stage. Great, guys. All right. Make sure to get each other's information. So... Few more points before we finish and before I'm going to give you the superpowers of networking. I see you're still switching your information. Good. So guys, what is the next thing you need to do? Now what? The next thing is to connect on LinkedIn or again exchange your contact information like you're doing right now. Good. So now you need to Exchange your information. The next thing, guys. I'll give you another second there. Okay, so first dot checked. You connected on LinkedIn and exchange information. Later, you'll send a message on LinkedIn, email, or WhatsApp with that picture. Then you send them the photo you took together, as we said, and you can send a meeting or a drink during the conference. You have three days to still meet with people. And don't forget to set another call, maybe um, ask for something, meet. Make sure to take this after the, con after the conference. So sending the picture and obviously then setting the scene for the follow-up for your next meeting. So we talked about meeting people, following up. And maybe the last thing I want to tell you guys is how to get others to willingly help you. You meet so many people, you're going to meet so many people here. And, and the main thing that makes people want to help us, you know what it is? Even if they don't know you? It's actually the oldest trick in the book, and it always works like magic. It's actually asking for advice or help. Excuse me, can I ask you for, for a little help? Or excuse me, can I ask for your advice? Or during a conversation then, in the right time during your conversation, during the small talk formula, just ask for their advice, because usually we love to help people. When you ask for something, most people enjoy helping, and most people feel very uh, like it's a compliment for them. If I ask you for advice, you'll probably feel, oh, it's, I'm, I'm happy to help you and share my two cents. So, and the good thing is that when people give, the, give us advice, usually they give us a very good, um, very good advice, and many times they even give us the solution that we need because they feel so good to help us, so they want to help us more. And, and obviously, that's what we do when we communicate with other people. So that's the oldest trick in the book, and that's asking for advice can get people help you in anything you wish to do. So before we finish, guys, we talked about cracking the code of networking. We talked about how to you're already a natural networker. We talked about how to plan your networking at this event and who you want to meet, how to break the ice with people, um, how to connect with almost anyone with a small talk formula. We talked about uh, how to build your relationship for the long run. And the one sentence, the one request for advice that can get people want to help you. But with that in mind, I want to give you now, I want to unlock your networking super superpowers. And you know how I'm going to do it. You know what the networkers' superpowers are? What is the most important thing that networkers have, have that allow them to go out there, to talk to people, to ask for things, to, to have fun, to just feel comfortable communicating with other people? What is this, that superpower that people have? Confidence, what else? Confidence going once, going twice, going three times. So it's actually similar. It's actually courage. I want you to leave this room with 20% or 25% or 30% more courageous to go out there and ask people and communicate with people and break the ice with total strangers. And this courage is actually waiting for you physically underneath your chair. So just look underneath your chair and you're going to have what I like to call the courage candy. <laughs> oh, I wonder which one of you understand where I'm heading, what I'm going to do with you guys. So I want you to raise your courage candy. We're going to do it together. The courage candy is the magical candy that when, once you eat it, it's not going to be easy. It's actually going to be a bit of, we're going to suffer a bit. 
But after two seconds, it's going to be the sweetest thing you ever had. And it's actually like meeting new people. It's so uncomfortable. Wait, wait, don't open it. It's so uncomfortable meeting new people at the beginning. It's like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. But after two seconds, it's like, oh, this person is nice, right? So I want you to go out of this room with the networking superpowers. So let's raise those candies up in the air. Let's open them up. And in the count of three, we're going to eat them together. Are you ready? OK, hold them. Let's wait until everybody has them. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Let's get those networking superpowers. <laughs> Good on us, guys. Whenever you're ready, whenever you can. <laughs> Is it sweet already? What you did now, what we did now, you got the networking superpowers. Now you're going to go out there. There is nothing you cannot do. Nothing you cannot do. And you definitely deserve a round of applause. Please. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Before we finish, sorry. Oh, okay no, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I thought it was One more thing. If you want to get this presentation, you could definitely welcome to get this presentation in this QR code. You're going to see it in the next slide as well. And I want to thank you guys. I want to wish you the best event. I want to wish you a happy networking. I hope that this, <clears throat> sorry. I hope that this event will bring you. <laughs> I hope that this event will bring you the courage, even to embarrass yourself like happened to me right now. It's okay, we're all people. So happy networking, good luck, and I'm waiting to see you outside for the networking. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Leron, and a round of applause for you. I, I was dizzy because of the sweet. Um, you said two seconds, it lasted like 15 seconds. Like, it's an extra strong, it's extra sour one. Brain wine, freeze sorry. with salt. <laughs> wow. Good, thank you very much. Uh, let's head to some questions about networking. Anyone has any uh, questions about networking? I would come out with a microphone. Anyway, I, I still have uh, some questions. So, um, yeah. okay, so first of all, do you have any tips on remembering names? Some have some, some games to yes. do that or anything? How do you do that? Definitely, uh, just one thing, I know we have people watching out from home, so I'm sorry I couldn't give you the sour candy. Maybe it's good for you, better for you, but um, I guess they, they got the idea. Um, so how to remember names? There are definitely a few, a few ways. First of all, it's about discussing the name. I mean, Lucas. Okay, where is this name? Where, wh why, why did your parents call you Lucas? Or my name, Liron. What is Liron? And I, I, can, I always explain what my name means. It means my happiness. Lee is my, Ron is happiness. Now you may remember my name a bit better. It's like Lee and Ron. So help people remember your names by giving them some story or explanation. Another thing is about association. For example, Lucas. Who do I know in the name of Lucas? And maybe when you see this person in your, in your mind's eye, then whenever I see you, I'll also see this person in my head, and I'll remember, oh, his name is like my friend Lucas. So see the person, ask, create a conversation about the name, and maybe just try to create your own story or maybe even a code. Sometimes when we write it in our, like in our mind's eye, when we like write it like L, U, or maybe add it into a code or just make sure you write it in your, in your mind, that's also help us to remember that. Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, sometimes uh, what they also do is I just repeat it like four times. Oh, of course. Just do it and then you Lucas, watch. Lucas, Lucas. Yes, yes, that also helps. Uh, there are some branding um, specialists who say, personal branding specialists who say that everyone should have their one minute pitch, for example, or be very much ready with that um, short presentation of what you do. I don't have it. I, every time I, I, someone asks me what I do, I have to think and I tell something different. Would you recommend of you know, going through it and sticking with the same phrase over and over? So that's a great, great, great question. So we talked about how to present ourselves and I suggest that you will create this initial um, sentence, like it's kind of an uh, interesting sentence that, that drives more 
questions about who you are. But the thing is that you can have your, your basic um, like 10 second speech, but it's really important who you're speaking with. Because if you're speaking to someone that you want to work with or a manager or someone you want to hire, you may want to introduce yourself a bit differently. So what I usually do is I create, I understand what are the pers who are the personas that I may meet. Again, maybe someone I want to work for, someone I want to hire, maybe someone I want to collaborate with. And I may have a few tweaks to my uh, pitch so I'll know how to say the right thing for the right person.